Texans are up to this year, find out what's really happening at the wildest party in high school and how the co-hosts spent their prom night. I had a disastrous prom experience. Football legend turned reality star Deion Sanders talks about raising 10 kids under one roof and why he called in Snoop Dogg to set one of them straight. This boy making hit records, man. Yeah. I'm unfamiliar with this, this so it's, it's, it's scary. Then, the heavyweight champ of Italian-American cooking shows the co-host how he went from dodging the heat on the streets to serving up five-star feasts. And why is one of these houses almost five million more than the other? Play along with the co-host to guess how much cash a crib costs from coast to coast. This is The View with Whoopi, Nicole Wallace, Rosie Perez, and today, Raven Simone's back in the co-host chair. It all starts now. exciting right now is prom season oh yeah and raven you said you got an eyeful of what the children are wearing these days yeah i went to go shop for the show and i went into a store that i used to go shop in when i did red carpets and like really expensive clothing when, you two. when i was two yeah and, <laughs> and i went in there how old and were you on your first red carpet i probably was like three or four yeah That's unbelievable we have to dig up a picture we should not um, <laughs> Definitely wearing Bravo uh, from Canada, plug. Um, but the, the prom dresses have turned into, like, things you would see Beyonce and Rihanna wearing. It's not the typical prom dresses that, and I, and I will say, I'm, I'm about to be 30 this year, so it's not the same ones that I saw in school. Right. Like, my mom even told me that she made hers or her aunt made hers yeah. or something crazy, and now it's, like, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for these dresses. Really, parents? Mm -hmm. Really? You wear it once. Get it gifted. Y'all learn about that later. <laughs> yeah. You get a gifted dress. Yeah. Well, but you know, it's a big thing. I mean, I, I know a lot of moms that go prom dress shopping with their daughters, and there's also a, a lot of pressure on the girls to have something fabulous and then to also have something that no one else is wearing. Um, I mean, I think the girls, and, and this is sort of a self-conscious age, I think they feel a lot of pressure to look like Beyonce and to look great. And so I think moms are sort of trying to balance making their daughters feel good and happy on this big night. I had a disastrous prom experience. So Did I, you? you know, I, oh God. I went with Henry Wang, who invited me like four <laughs> months before the prom. And you know, you, you, I hadn't been invited, so I said yes. And then the love of my life invited me like three hours before, because the love of his <laughs> life dumped him. And so I had to watch him make out with some skinny blonde all night. Anyway, oh. forget. Oh. And I'm just saying, like, if the dress makes your daughter feel better, I can see a mom like wanting to, I know. My, I parents, know. my parents would have made me work for a dress, especially yeah, if I it wasn't for a like dress. a red carpet. I, my mom didn't buy me a fit, but, but I just, I understand it is all I'm saying. Yeah. I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? Well, no, I mean, I was, I was poor, 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 poor. So I, I worked my butt off um, uh, jobs after school for a prom dress, and the only thing I could afford was go to a vintage shop. Mm -hmm. And I got this really um, tight-fitting, hoochie mama-looking sequence dress. <laughs> and, um, and I never made it to the prom because the guy, <laughs> the guy who went, who uh, uh, asked me out, um, Don't he, say his name. Uh, okay, I won't say his name. We went to his house before the prom. I go, where are your parents? Oh, is that champagne? Passed out, never made it to the prom. I was pissed off. <laughs> to get this teeny thing, yeah, she, you know. She has like, no class. capacity. Yeah. No capacity. <laughs> one sip did. and she's got the smile. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know. yeah that's why he kept pouring, because he thought he was going to get lucky. Oh, you know, girl. I never made it. Um, but the bigger thing is, when you talk about cost, they have this new thing going on called prom posals. Yes. Where they do these elaborate invitations to high school proms, you know, that they, 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 look at that. Like, they're trying to do a wedding proposal, but all that is, and the cost involved is stacked. It's staggering. It's staggering. And, and it's doing all this to get her to go to the prom? Just to go to the prom. What's that? That's serious? Yes. 
That's not the cost of the ticket. That's not the cost of the tux or the or the ride. That's the cost for the invitation, and it could cost up to four hundred dollars. Three fifty to four hundred dollars. Whatever happened to the phone call? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I think they text now. Uh, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. Oh but I mean, you know, I didn't go to prom. I didn't. I did not go to high school. Uh, it, it just seems so strange to me. And a friend of mine was going to give strange. me a prom for my birthday. <laughs> and I was like, I, I, don't, I don't know. Your next birthday celebration theme is going to be Wendy's No, no, because we just yes, said, no, yes, no, we said yes, we're not going to do it. Yeah. But I, the thing that I do love about prom season is there are lots and lots of great places that are finding dresses for young women to wear, mm -hmm. that they're uh, uh, altering and That's putting nice. on. And, I, and so in my bad head, I think, OK, so you should buy the prom dress. And then the next thing you do is you'll be a bridesmaid. So use that dress and cut it up a little bit. Smart. And then you, know, smart. you can just keep using it till it's just a handkerchief. Yes. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> I just made. Yeah. But you know, there is it true that there's a lot of drinking on prom night? Because there's an outreach program that recently staged it, like a simulated party to show the uh, kind of drinking games and passing out and the pressure to have sex that can happen oh. at these parties. And it totally freaked out these parents who were watching it. I mean, and the question I guess many are asking is, did they forget? that they were young ones, too. But I don't think the same kinds of pressure, and maybe because I didn't go to a prom, so this is why you can't listen to me. Um, no, but you know, I don't know I, if the I, same I, kinds well, of pressure were there. It happened to me. It happened to me, and I was, I was, you know, like a good girl, you know, and and I, I just didn't understand why all the boys thought I was a slut because I was a virgin all throughout high school, and 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 the guy me just, too. You, you too, yeah. and the guy just wanted to have sex with me, and the pressure was yeah. immense. Yeah. It was immense, and and I didn't drink alcohol, yeah. and I just felt pressured, yeah. and um, I was like, I guess this is what you do. There, you know? there, there was alcohol drinking in my middle school. Oh, I remember there wow. were parties where I didn't go. I wasn't allowed to go. I was right. working. But <laughs> I, I, there was a lot of parties that there were alcohol in, and, and I find it interesting. I always, I'm going to say it now, I always feel like we should learn how to drink before we learn how to drive. Because I, I, I don't know. I just feel like you have to understand your alcohol a little bit better before you get in the side of a car. It's a very European That's way of thinking. European. I, I, I think yeah. it, we drink alcohol so much it's in food it's not in food and when you're and when you're showing these teenagers about mm -hmm. drinking on TV mm -hmm. and their parents are worried about what they're going through at mm -hmm. these simulated uh, events teach me how to correctly stop binging you know what I'm yeah. saying stop yeah. binging teach me how to drink correctly so I'm not ruining my body wine is good for you you know what it reminds <laughs> I mean, that's, that's mommy's mantra. <laughs> um, but um, it reminds me of that scene in A Few Good Men. You know, you want the truth, you can't handle the truth. Parents say they want to know. You know, parents can't handle the truth sometimes, you know? Parents and so, know, oh wait, but you know what? Well, I'm do not, parents do know, they do know. But I think they would be in denial well, that, you know. Well, the, the bottom so. line is you can't deny it. You know what goes on, you know, and because you know, if you're not on top of it, right. see, quit trying to be friends. That's right. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Quit trying to be friends with your kids. Not even a little bit. I would love if I was friends with my parents. You I know would have told them more. I'm a friend of my, my daughter and I are friends. But what I realized is that I still had to be the bad guy. Because that's my job. For that was my benefit. mom's job. That yes, for, for her. her not for, and, yeah. and also for me. Yeah. Because once you grow up, I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a drag to grow up. Yeah. But once you become that adult, you then have to look out for your child the way your mom, God willing, looked out yeah. for you. That's your job. But you know what? <laughs> The girls just fell again, okay? <laughs> I don't know why they keep trying to, they're right down here under the table. <laughs> we'll be right back with more Hot Topics and I'll find the left one. <laughs> You're not gonna like this. Why racking up the friends on Facebook could cost you your lover. Next.
Welcome back. You know, recently a female art director wrote an article on why she started wearing the same outfit to work every day. She said she does it because it means she never has to think about what she's going to wear and it frees her mind up. Now, you know, I usually wear a white shirt every day, but I dropped something on my white shirt this morning. <laughs> so now I'm in a black shirt. But would you guys do that? And does it make sense to you? It makes sense on one hand, but I don't know if I could do it. I, I my, my husband, he, he has two options, black or white. Right. You know, he either wears, you've seen him, either a white mm -hmm. shirt or a black shirt. Yeah. Um, and I, and I just, it's, I, you know, but I understand it because she also said that it, it freed her up. Yeah. You know, her mind was pure, purely on the productivity of her art. Right. And they do this in school as well. Mm -hmm. In schools, it, it, it lowers the competition. They call it a uniform. They call yeah. it a uniform. So everybody's in the same vein. Mm -hmm. so. Mine's backwards. I wear a uniform when I'm at home. And then when I go to work, I dress up. But then again, I'm in the industry and I have to put on something mm -hmm. that way. But when I'm home, it is pajama pants and a sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. Consistent, consistently, and maybe the same one over a couple of days. <laughs> There's you nothing know, wrong with that. No, 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 <laughs> my, my son's going to school next year in a uniform, and um, and I, I think it's sort of nice that as a little kid, there's not going to be any haggling about what to wear. And I, I'm like you, like I wear the same thing. I wear jeans and a sweater in the winter, and jeans and a t-shirt in the summer. <laughs> but I do love the things that we get to wear on this show because they are different, and they are. I love seeing what you have on every day, you know, and, and you wear beautiful, beautiful clothes too. I love yeah, seeing what you wear. I wear so I, beautiful white shirts. I, no, every day. You, yeah, yeah. You yeah, she'll tell you. You know. Yeah. When I went, when I walked into your closet, <laughs> and I didn't say anything, I just went, oh my god. There's a lot and of beautiful white shirts. It was white, white shirt, white shirt, white shirt. And they're yeah. so crisp. Yeah. You could like down. literally like hurt down. yourself Be on the. Because uh, to me, so crisp. A, a clean white shirt means that the day is is a good day. It's yeah. a bright, it's a clean day. Right. And for me, color, I, it looks okay on me, but it doesn't feel as I'm not as comfortable. Mm -hmm. I need a white shirt. Today, as I said, I dropped some, and this is what's happened now that I've gotten older. <laughs> I'm wearing more of my food. <laughs> I just, you know, I see the fork. <laughs> I see the, I dip the fork. I see the fork on the way, I'm watching. <laughs> and I see stuff on the side of the fork, too. And I get it in my mouth, and I think, yeah, I got it in. And then I look down, and there it is. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> you know, the internet is impacting the world uh, so many different ways, you know. So see if this surprises you at all. Uh, social media, especially Facebook, is a cause of one in every seven divorces. I believe it. Wow. One in every seven. I, but why? You know why? I, why my, do you think? My husband was the one that said, you know, you get off Twitter and pay attention to your son. Because I'd never been on Twitter. When I got this job, I started tweeting. And, you know, when you're staring at your phone, you are not paying attention to the people in your life who right. know you. You're right. reading something from someone you'll never meet. Right. So it's why I'm not on Facebook. I don't tweet. I, don't, I am on no social media. Right. And I think it keeps me, when I'm home, it keeps me connected. It does. You know, I, I think that there is something to that because usually the only time I do tweet boxing. is doing boxing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, my cousin Sixto um, told me that it's a different experience watching boxing with me if I'm tweeting or not. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, really? I said, but I'm having so much fun. He goes, yeah, you're having fun. <laughs> you know, and I was right. like, oh, wow. And so now when I am watching boxing with, with my friends and family, I limit the amount of tweets right. so I can engage with them. So, you know, and that's on such a small scale. Right. I couldn't imagine if a spouse was on social media 24-7. Right. It would drive me insane. But yeah. I also think it, it, it erodes. I'm worried that, that personal relationships are the ones that you have with people that yes. you look at and talk to. And I, I'm all for a pen pal. I had pen pals. We wrote letters. I never saw them. But the primal relationships have to be with the people that you see. Those are your primary connections. And I think that, that young people are learning this, the wrong lesson about social media. It's to enhance the connections. It's to keep you in more frequent contact with people. It's not to replace your personal relationships with people you'll never meet by sounding cool on Twitter and but Facebook. There, right. But there, it's hard sometimes to have a personal connection to, with someone in the same room as you. You're, you're insecure. You know, they're judging you. You can see the judgment. When you're behind the screen, you are comfortable in your position, whatever avatar you're pretending to be and I think ultimately we're gonna be just chilling in our own house on the computer sadly I mean I've seen a lot of movies that way where our social awkwardness takes over like I can I never have to leave to go get groceries because I, every time I see the grocery person I'm scared to see their face and I'm like oh my goodness I'm scared 
you smell? Like, I don't know what's going on. Not everybody, just somebody that I know. And um, I feel like this saves us from that social awkwardness, but it also gives us stuff to talk about. We know what's going on. Well, here's the funny thing. Thousands of years, thousands of years, we have had to deal with our social awkwardness on a one-to-one -one basis. We've had to deal with the fact that we may not be the perfect person for that person, but there might be somebody else in the room. In a funny way, there's a great book called Ready Player One that is magnificent, talking about exactly what you're talking about. These guys live in a world that is just in their room, and they are avatars in a different world, and all kinds of stuff and shoes. It's a great read if you ever want to get it, Ready Player One. And I think that people are starting, I think your generation is actually starting to move away from that and trying, trying to connect by doing these crazy videos saying go to the park. I think they're trying different ways so that they don't isolate. Because when you isolate, it's dangerous. It's terrible. very dangerous. It's very well, dangerous. Careful for you. Yes. Yeah, careful. And so, come back to the fold. I come don't back like out. It. I don't come back like out. It. We got you, baby. <laughs> you know, here on the View, we love to give you information that you will not find anywhere else on daytime TV. So how about this? Penguins melt ice, construct homes, and build nurseries with their poop. So apparently, these guys are just pooping away. <laughs> they are melting all this ice. There's a lot of penguin poop happening right there. And little Oswaldo and Regina <laughs> are making a little nest for little Fernando, who's going to be coming. Much like we have a lady who may give birth at any time during the show. We got our fingers crossed, but when we come back, we'll come back with Deion Sanders, who can catch the baby. We'll be right back. Deion Sanders is the Super Bowl champ turned reality TV star who invented end zone showboating, and he's showing you how it's done next. with two Super Bowl rings who went on to become a pendant winning baseball player but it's all just been trading for raising 10 kids on his reality show Dion's family playbook take a look hey nice car Shiloh is getting on our last nerve about this whole car situation can someone take him here can someone take him there it's like we're his chauffeur now I roll up to the crib and I see my car broker with Shiloh in the driver's seat they ain't lost their mind oh man hey Dan I think my dad might kill me after this one, but he's gonna have to catch me in my car first. It ain't April, but I see a fool. <laughs> oh, Shiloh's gonna get it. <laughs> Please welcome Deion Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> Made it to the view. 10 o'clock a.m. in Dallas. I watch you all the time. Oh, yeah? Oh, wow. Yes. Awesome. Thank I you. Do. I go way back with Whoopi. Yeah, we... Whoopi's my baby. An <laughs> <laughs> uh, episode when Whoopi did moonlighting. Yeah. You came out of there, girl. I said, Ooh, Whoopi. <laughs> you remember that? I do, I do. Okay. She's <laughs> <is> blushing. <laughs> You know, this, this, this guy has been one of my heroes always because he he showed everybody what was possible. He was just one of those guys that showed us what was possible. So I, 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 I love him. And, I, and the second yeah. season of his show is happening, yes. and um, he, you kicked it off a few weeks ago. Please tell us about how it's different than your other reality shows uh, well, featuring celebrities. I, I just think, well, first of all, we're real. There's nothing pre-scripted. I'm not reading a prompter. This is it. My kids are really crazy. They really, are. <laughs> they, they really like that. And you, you go through the trials and tribulations of, of, of gamut from three to ages 18, and it's not simplistic. My mother's there. She lives with me. I'm happy my mama lived with me <laughs> and, uh, because I can do it alone. Are all these kids yours, these 10 kids? Okay, now, when you say 10 kids with a black man, you got to explain. Yeah, I, I need to... <laughs> Explain. You got to explain. <laughs> okay, my oldest daughter is 23. She lives in Atlanta, you know. My, uh, my oldest son is 21. He goes to SMU. He's on football scholarship. Then I have an 18-year-old niece who's getting ready to go off to college. Another kid, Jaquan, we call him Florida. 
that he's 17, he plays football for me. He's a great individual. My 15-year-old biological son, my 13-year-old biological son, my 11-year-old beautiful daughter, my mother brought to the table two foster twins that she raises, and my nephew How old that's are they? three. How old are the, uh, They're nine. Okay, so 10, 9. Yeah, track of yeah. Okay. Ele it's yeah. like two years yeah. apart, yeah. everybody. Okay. Okay. 13, 11, wow. yeah, nine, then TJ's three. Wow. I commend you. Yeah. yeah. That, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm hands on. I know the sizes of everyone. I know the shoe sizes of the teachers. And I could braid some hair too, yeah. by the way. Oh, and so, so what, yeah. are you, what are your rules? Because you, you started up. Well, <clears throat> first of all, when we eat, I'm old school. Let's put away the cell phones. We got to talk. Oh, God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. One screen at a time. We're watching TV, watching TV. If we we on a computer, we're on a computer. No, no two screens. One right. at a time. But right. when we, we eat, we eat. And we talk, we communicate. I want to know what happened in your day. I want to know who's tripping. I want to know who's good girl coming over. Mm -hmm. the boy. I, I want to know everything. I got to meet mamas. Right. You yeah. don't just drop yeah. a kid off to my house. I need to meet somebody. I need to make eye contact. If you show out on me in public, I'm going to show out on you. That's the number two rule. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Well, you know, I, I... I commend you that um, with with this huge clan um, that you know you open your heart and your homes to foster kids because I was in the system myself and it makes a huge difference when you are you you give someone a chance and so that's wonderful. Now you say that. That's from my mama though. Yeah. My mama's raised like nine foster kids and that's her heart. So I've I've, I've inherited what I've seen throughout my career and throughout my life. So I I love kids and you, when you have eight kids that lives in the house, they're gonna always have someone over. So now, that's a lot of food. That's a lot of groceries. That's, <laughs> so it's a lot of a lot, a lot going of time on. time at Costco. So yeah. did you want to do this because you 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 said that there was a lack of of African American male oh model of role models on I, television. Yeah, ethnic man. Period. I grew up on on the Jeffersons, George and Lionel. Even though yeah. there was two Lionels, yeah. George and Lionel. Yeah. I, grew, I grew up on yeah. good times. Yeah. Good times. Times that were, was good, but it was good times. That's right. You know, Sample and Son, the yeah. relationship with Fred and Lamont yeah. in the Cosby. Yeah show I grew up on in that era even mm -hmm. Archie Bunker he loved yes. his daughter I, that's the era we we don't have nothing to reach out mm -hmm. to now and to gravitate to that we say that's real I, I want to do that True. everything is ignorant right now everything is acting out mm -hmm. trying to make a dollar <laughs> Well, on the show, your your son Shiloh wants to be in the music industry, yes. and I think you know about that a lot. And you didn't want him to be in, so you called Snoop Dogg, and he kind of that kind of backfired on you. But <laughs> you yeah, because but we I, happen to be good. I said, Snoop, bring it to me real. I, I need to know what I'm dealing with. But can we bring up why maybe you don't want your son to be in the music industry? Can we play this clip really fast? That, what happened? What, I just want to show. At? Uh, is that uh, is that a music video oh, with you oh, right now? God. You know what? Yeah. Is, that, is this why you don't want your son in the industry? Let me explain. Yeah, you I totally forgot. I remember that. Everything I asked God to allow me to do, he has allowed me to do. Yes. That was a hit. That was... <laughs> My brother would say double that yeah, is. I, I had a good time doing it, and, but I, I don't really know a lot about the industry. And I'm a control guy. You know, when I like to know what's going on with my kids. I like to have control. That's why I never smoke and drink in my life. I like to have control. You're definitely yeah. showing yeah. that in your show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I, I like, I had to call Snoop. Mm -hmm. So Snoop had to allow me to know what I'm dealing with. Right. And Snoop validated. He said, man, this, I hate to tell you, Prime, but the guy is good. He's really a good producer. Mm -hmm. oh, that's yeah. Now, one of your sons is in the audience, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's your door? you to tell us something about your dad that uh, he won't tell us. Well, he's a good father. And then this one girl at the school called him cute. Like, that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> he got mad because one of the girls that like him said, your dad is cute. I said, well, you look like me, baby. Aww. He is cute. Yeah. He's very yeah. cute. You are both, you're both very cute. Um, so you're, I think you need to write a parenting book, though. I think that's yes. what you have to do next. Yes. Um, I Thank would buy you. it. I want to buy it. Thank I want to see it all in one book that I could pull off the shelf when I'm having an oh shoot moment. Yeah. Um, but you're also famous um, for your touchdown dances in the end zone, and I, you know, my whole family watched you. And I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if you have <laughs> any. Um, there we go. Thank you. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah. Set leg. One, two. Awesome. Okay. One more Ready? Time. Yeah. Here. One, two, one, two. Awesome. Right? Yeah. Can we get that one? Okay. Ready? Yeah. One, two, one, two. There you go. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> All right. I, I love this woman to life. Thank you so much, Dion Sanders. And don't forget, Dion's Family Playbook airs Saturday nights on OWN, and we'll be right back. Yeah. This tough guy was almost a good fella until he became a great chef. He's telling you how food saved his life and serving up a feast to die for. Next. segment with a backstory about a tough guy who got off the streets and into the kitchen. Take a look. Steve Martirano was never an angel. He grew up in a tough South Philly neighborhood, stole a few cars, tried selling drugs, and thought about joining the mob. But it was cooking that saved his life. He started making sandwiches in his mother's basement and now owns five nationally successful restaurants. Please welcome the author of It Ain't Sauce, It's Gravy, Steve Marano. Steven! Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. We're starving. Excited. Yes. Excited. Excited to teach you how to make okay. Italian-American food. Cool. So how did you end up with five fancy restaurants? Because one would not say to look at you that that's what they would think of instantaneously. What are you trying a to say? A restaurateur. What are you trying to say? I'm just saying. I don't know what you're trying to say. I'm, no, I thought I Okay, but I, <laughs> said it. You said it. And it's the perfect reason why you never judge a book by its cover. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. But five restaurants. So, well, the truth is, you know, as you as you heard earlier, you know, I'm from South Philly, and I'm from the streets of Philly. So, from South Philly, it's great, great. And and I, you know, I was headed in the wrong path. Mm -hmm. You know, that you know, all my most of my family was, you know doing some time, mm. and the yeah. end was always the same. You're gonna get yeah. killed or you're gonna go to prison. So right. I want to do something different. Can't sing and dance, right? So what do I do? You were put on the earth to I make started, food. I started, thank you. I started oh. to cook, and I started out of my basement. Mm. And I started passing flyers out in the neighborhood, knocking right. on people's doors. I did it for five years. Mm -hmm. It was illegal. My mother loved it. No gas, no electric, no phone right. bill, right? I did good. But then I moved to Florida. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get out of Philly. I opened up a little joint with $40. When I say $40, that's all I had. Never went to culinary school, never went to business school. I worked hard all my life, and I never gave up. And everybody told me, no, you'll never be anything, you'll never do anything, you went up in prison. My son. My son. Uh, <laughs> come on, baby, you know. Come on. Come on, Pop. Come on, Pop. Look at your pride. My son, my son wanted ice cream across the street. I come give it to him. But, you but I could buy, I could, but I could buy an ice cream parlor now for him because I never gave up. Never gave up. There you go. Never gave up. Go ahead, baby. But my, my point to my book, it ain't sauce, it's gravy. It's about all the obstacles that hit you in life. You know, without, without failures, you never get to success. That's right. So the more you push forward, the more you don't give up, the more you succeed. Just be careful with success and give back, stay humble, never forget where you come from. That's right. Yeah. So, you gotta, here, baby. you gotta teach me how to make something. I got you. I, I got otherwise, you. I got to, you. otherwise, you'll have to marry okay. me. So, so, listen, so, mm. Sunday gravy mm. and sauce. People in New York, Boston, and Chicago want to fist fight me every time they see me because they call sauce. I say gravy. But is gravy, gravy but, but, sauce? But gravy. Is it the same thing? And yeah, if it's delicious, I don't care what you call it. But I got famous for our meatball. I That's can see what why. made us all over. Yeah. We use veal beef and pork. Okay. We, in fact, you want to roll one? Yeah, roll one, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You take a I'll little bit of veal eat. beef and pork, okay. the recipe's in the book. Okay. It ain't sauce, it's gravy, okay. right? You got all that? Okay. Yeah. And then you. Yeah. I love what you eat, girl. I love what you eat. That's my meatball. Okay. Whoopi's eating my meatball. You gotta roll it, roll it, okay. roll it. Okay, all right, all right, I roll 
rolling. Go down. Go down. Go down. I do. I do. My mother's Greek, so, so we, we you're make rolling. them smaller. These you're are rolling. bigger than a Greek meatball. You're rolling is big. Now, these are smaller, right? Yeah, yeah but... Uh, the Greek meatballs are small. Italians make okay, big, okay. wonderful meatballs. So I like my meatballs big, okay? Yeah. I like them big. But, but you have to fry the meatball. You don't put it... You don't... You want to taste a fry? I want yeah, a fry ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ready for wow. this? Yes, please. There's no gravy with it. Yeah, baby girl. Yeah. Awesome. Listen, anybody like mayo? Let me teach you something about Italian Americans. Why it's Italian American. Take a fried meatball, sliced bread. When you got no money, you got to use sliced bread. And you put mayo, because it's the greatest sandwich in the world. Wow. Is that okay. good? So good. Okay. So you this, fry it. What is it? This okay. here, for vegetarians, this is famous. It's called the Martirana eggplant stack. Take fried eggplant. Fresh tomato, fresh mozzarella, yeah. cause you can eat whatever you want. Okay. Ooh. Balsamic vinegar and olive oil, it's unbelievable. Oh, wow. This is the oh, Sunday wow. dinner. Oh, wow. This is the Sunday dinner. This is dinner. insane. Wow. I'm gonna have to be wheeled out of here. Oh my God, this is so good. Here it is. Here's the bottom line. It ain't sauce. 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 It's gravy. It's gravy. gravy. This book, you're gonna love it. So we thank Steve because Sorry. he's the man, and you heard his passion. You're gonna get a copy of this book. <laughs> start packing your bags when you see how much house you can get for your money in different parts of the country next We can guess how much house you can get for your money in different parts of the country. Yay. Please welcome Extra's real estate <laughs> expert and author of Find It, Fix It, Flip It, Michael Corbett. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. So I think you have a couple of um, real estate porn addicts. Yeah, I so love this looking is gonna at be, real this estate. It's going to be a tough listing. crowd, I can yeah. tell. Yeah, yeah we're going to be good. And Whoopi's good at this game. So okay, explain the, key the rules. The is, I'm going to show you a property. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to look at it, I'm going to describe it, but I'm not going to tell you where it is. You're going to have to guess the price, all right? Okay, and I think Rosie goes first, right? Uh, yep. We're a little competitive here. Okay, so. here we go. I'm not competitive. Right. She here's, is. No. Here's our first property. This one. You might as well just be at the White House. Look at this. It's a gorgeous oh plantation, marble entryway, chandeliers, huge high ceilings, beautiful Chandler. hardwood floors. It's, uh, <laughs> it's about 4,000 square feet, according to Realtor.com, four bedrooms, three and a half baths. This is a grand, wonderful estate. Now, keep in mind, Rosie, this could be the Hamptons. This or. could be San Francisco, Beverly Hills. Or. Where do you think this could be? And judge your price. How much is that house worth? Um, what, that's what I said, Washington, because you gave the hint to be the White House. Uh, not, you go ahead, make it, go ahead, guess. Um, I don't know, I would say like uh, two million. Two million is your guess? Yeah. Wow, you could buy a couple of them because this is 325. Awesome! This one is in, in Cleveland, Tennessee. Cleveland, Tennessee. Where yeah, is you it? could. I'm going. Cleveland, Tennessee. Okay. It's for, uh, actually near Chattanooga. All right, next All right. one. Right, so next this one, one this is for mine. you. Okay. This right. one a little bit bigger. Okay, bigger. A little right. bit bigger. This is 12 oh bedrooms, God. 16 and a half bathrooms, unbelievably beautiful, old world charm, movie theater, bowling alley, vineyard, <laughs> gorgeous wine cellar, tennis court. This is an amazing house. It's on 25 acres, stunning swimming pool. All right, now again, this could be anywhere in the country. How much is it this? It looks like the, the trees, though. We've got palm trees. I'm gonna mm -hmm. go with Palm Springs. I'm gonna go with $6.3 million. Yeah, wow, good guess, because that would maybe buy you the swimming pool. It's $195 million. <laughs> Beverly Hills. Here. This is a gorgeous property. I actually got to take a tour of this, and it is a stunning, is it someone, magnificent property. Does it belong property. to someone famous? It, no, it doesn't, oh, and it doesn't belong to anyone well. famous. Well, one of the Hills most expensive homes different. on the market. Very different now. You used, Beverly Hills, you used to think celebrities all yep, the time. Not anymore. It's, it's not celebrities in Beverly business Hills anymore. People? It's business folks and... International. A lot international. of international buyers. And moguls. Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, well, wow. then, then right, you well, know what? I decided for you we're going to go a little smaller. Did you get me a castle? <laughs> <laughs> this one 
This is adorable. Take a look at this. It is really a sweet house. It's two bedrooms, one and a half beds. Look at that adorable little living room, eat-in kitchen. It's got a wonderful cottage feeling to it. It's got a little cozy sitting room. And if you need more space, you got a little studio out back. It's on a couple of acres, very sweet little charming little uh, house. That's the Hansons. So, so <laughs> me, what do you think? I'm gonna say a million and a half. Um, almost. It's almost two million dollars. It's in Rhode Island. Rhode it's Island! It's got an incredible beachfront view overlooking the ocean. Stunning property. I think I looked at that. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually think I looked at that. I had a feeling you would know this because yeah, you know I, New I, England. I love that house. Okay. All right, I think we should do Whoopi, so the, the hard version for Whoopi. She deserves an advanced one because okay. she got the closest. All Explain right, you want to go ahead. Whoopi, this is going to be an interesting one. I found some craftsmen, some beautiful craftsmen homes really? that are identical, pretty much about the same size. Let's take a look at them, and you're going to guess on these. This one is, they're both about uh, 3,400 square feet, four bedrooms. Three and a half baths. The one on the right actually has even an extra uh, half bath. They were both built one in 2007, one in 2000, right, so in, in 1907, one in, in 1914. Oh, yes? Beautiful, wonderful, completely renovated, gorgeous okay. craftsmen. So, if you were to buy one of these, how much do you think it would be? Well, is it, is it got the original glass? A lot of original leaded glass, a lot of the original uh -huh. molding. I, I mean, it's beautifully done. I will say, these are both really beautifully done. And what did you ask me? I said, how much would it cost? <laughs> how much to buy one of these? Uh, 700000 Okay, you are not even in the middle. The first one is going to be, <laughs> take a look, 325000 and the other is 5380000 The difference original? between, yes, they are original. They're both original. They're both original. Nice. The difference between Ohio and Palo Alto yes. Silicon Valley. Yeah. Thanks to Michael Corbett. If you want to play along at home and guess what it's worth, check out our website for even more houses. Yeah. We'll be right back. to Raven for co-hosting. Thanks to you guys for coming to see this show. We appreciate you appreciating us. Thank you so much. We want you to take a little time to enjoy whatever view you happen to stumble upon. Woo!